now give the order to develop or dispose of nuclear weapons from your iDroid. With a nuclear deterrent, even if you're discovered while infiltrating a rival PF's FOB, most PF's won't dare retaliate. But you, of all people, know how dangerous it can be to have nuclear weapons. So will you add nukes to our arsenal as a deterrent? Or will you take them away from other PF's and dispose of them to help build a world that's free of nuclear weapons? I'll leave that decision up to you. extract the missing CIA agent. The target was laying low with the friendly Mujahideen during the vocal cord parasites incident. The man headed back to OKB-0 after the Soviets recaptured it. Check the target's VI on your iDroid. the staff with Walbachia to keep them from becoming symptomatic. Hmm. That should also contain the infection. How did this happen in the first place? It has to have been a cipher spy within our ranks. If this is so, then why the Kakango strain? If their intent was to wipe you out? Skullface said the remaining English parasite was close to the boss. If this latest strain was his doing, he wouldn't have tipped his hand. It is possible someone brought eggs onto the base without knowing. Stuck to their shoes, clothing. Now that makes the most sense to me. And where did the eggs come from? You mentioned that your boss visited Nzoya Badiopulu. Sure, but his gears disinfected immediately upon return. <laughs> then he was not the carrier. And not just the boss. All staff dispatched to high-risk regions were quarantined on the flight back. When the symptoms first appeared, we checked and disinfected all equipment used up to that point. Any and all prisoners, soldiers, materials, and animals extracted during missions were also quarantined. So, that just leaves. I have seen children around here. Where are they from? All over. Some were being held hostage at a mine. Then there were the troublemakers at Bwala Yamasa. Bwala Yamasa? Yeah. Their clothes, their things. Did you burn them? They're just kids. We couldn't. And besides, not one of them's shown symptoms. The parasites don't infect prepubescent hosts. Their vocal cords are not fully developed. Well, if infection doesn't occur in children, it is possible they carry the eggs. Flawless work. You never cease to amaze, boss. Check the kid's stuff. I doubt there is any trace left by now. But if there is, some of those kids must be close to hitting puberty. How could we have missed this? The name Wala Yamasa got quite a reaction from you. I'm guessing the Kakongo strain was released in that village. Cypher used that region to experiment with focal cord parasite transmission. The Kakongo strain. The settlements around the refinery upstream of Bwala Yamasa were the proving grounds. They would infect one villager and record transmission speed. That's it. You've made it out of the hot zone. No sign of the enemy. Mission complete, boss. It would slip. Mission complete and how?
boss. The target filled us in on what's been going on. He betrayed the Soviets, passing information to Langley, but got scared after learning XOF used the vocal cord parasites. Then came feelings of guilt that his leaks sent comrades to their deaths, and fear that America might deploy such a weapon itself. But in reality, XOF and Langley don't have a collaborative relationship, and Skullface was not working for America. Still, I can't blame the man for being afraid. After laying low with the Mujahideen, he tried to cut his ties with the U.S. and return to the Soviet military. But along the way, someone came after him, and he was forced back into hiding. Could have been remnants of XOF looking to silence him. And you know the rest. He doesn't seem to know much about the parasites, but nevertheless, it'd be too dangerous to hand him over to Langley or the Soviets. We'll keep him here as originally planned. Boss, come on back to base. something. Thank you Lisa for getting rid of the disease. Boss. Roger. Please landing zone. Roger. There. Both the Pashto and Tajik languages are spoken in the mountains of Afghanistan, and population density is low. Ideal testing grounds for how accurately the parasites target only the specified language. It is also relatively easy to prevent the spread of infection. And the results? The first test, I am told, was a success. Once the Pashtun Mujahideen were infected with the Pashto strain. Please select a mission. Mission accept heading to Afghanistan. Heading to Afghanistan.
first. Use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility. You mentioned that the man on fire was crushed under Sahelanthropus in its hangar. Yeah. He was caught under the wheels of his transport platform. <sighs> but his body wasn't found. What? We searched the area the moment we arrived, but there was no trace of him. I wasn't hallucinating. I know. I trust you on that. That means someone must have taken the body. But when I got there, everything was still as it was. Even Skullface hadn't been touched. I can't see a reason to sneak into a place like that and drag out the biggest, heaviest guy there. What are you getting at? The only option left is... He got up and walked away. That platform that ran him complete. over. Just and ran him over. Complete. You're saying that's not enough? I don't want to believe it, but maybe not. He shrugs off bullets, even rocket strikes. There's no reason to think that would finish him. It seems ridiculous, but I'll start gathering eyewitness accounts just in case. If you dig up anything concrete, I want to know. You'll be the first, if I dig anything up. But I hope to hell I don't. No kidding. Your well Bakia stopped the infection all right, but I still don't get it. How can a few bacteria change males to females? I know they're only bugs, but... It is not such a rare thing in the natural world. Many insects and nematodes are infected with Bulbachia. But why? They nest in the cell cytoplasm of the host. Even in the egg cells. With the result that the offspring are born infected. Mother to child transmission. However, Wolbachia cannot nest in sperm because they do not have cytoplasm. So even a successful infection of a male ends after a single generation. This means the Volbachia must resort to maximizing the population of infected females. Sounds like an ethnic cleansing campaign on a tiny scale. Gender change from male to female is their survival tactic. So more females means more Volbachia carriers so it can keep thriving in the following... He's coming too. Roger that. The parasites in a human host are supposed to be a mating pair. If there's no male, there'll be no offspring at all. It's killing itself. Slow down. This tactic is intended for environments where a single male can copulate with multiple females. Originally, the Wolbachia did not infect the vocal cord parasites. I created a mutated strain, modifying the Wolbachia so that it could infect monogamous pairs. The Wolbachia's greatest multiplying tactic, the male-to-female change, worked against itself in the monogamous parasites. Just as you said, then I performed repeated selection of Wolbachia strains until I achieved a hundred percent certainty of male-to-female conversion. Creating female-female pairs, unable to reproduce. And you say the Wolbachia affects the host of the host, that is, us, cutting off our means to reproduce? It is almost certain. Of course, we will not turn female. After all, mammals possess no natural gender-changing function. But some Wolbachia strains can cause cytoplasmic incompatibility in the host. Is that some cell deformity? Put simply, it means the altered sperm of infected males kill the female's egg on contact. And that's happened to us? Yeah. You made it. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility. To date, there are no cases. First, you have to identify the targets. Recon the site with your binoculars. Once you know where the targets are, take them out to put their network out of action. How you do that is up to you. Affinity with humans. 
I do not know enough analysis. to say for sure. So the parasite warps the host. Reminds me of what Skullface said. It is the way of all organisms analysis to create complete. their own optimal environment. Just look at you and this space. Organisms that cannot do this are doomed to extinction. That antenna is one of the targets. That's another one of the targets. Do you see any more? That creates the connection between life and life. Parasitism, symbiosis, or death. In this way, the host too is challenged to adapt. Looks like the target. We know where all the antennas are now. Take out all three of them. How you do it is your call. Keep looking. That's another one of the targets. 
Do you see any more? That's where Emirate got the technology. Uranium. They're using nuclear fuel for armor now. No. What they use for nuclear fuel is uranium-235, which is extracted from natural uranium. Depleted uranium is a byproduct of that process. Sort of like the leftovers, I guess. The garbage. Uranium-235 makes up 0.72% of natural uranium, whereas depleted uranium contains only 0.2%. What are the benefits of using it for armor? It's a pretty short list. Uranium's a heavy metal, like lead, meaning it can hold a greater amount of kinetic energy. Analysis but it also boasts complete. a hardness closer to tungsten. That makes it an ideal material to use for, say, armor-piercing ammunition penetrators. But it's not the best choice for armor. Its volume is less than that of ceramics, but for an equal weight, you could end up with less protection. So why use it then? According to Emric, it came down to him being unable to source ceramics technology from a manufacturer. Plus, given that it's an upright walking vehicle, he wanted to reduce the bulk of certain areas. Despite all that, depleted uranium still makes for some tough armor. And Emmerich says it's been proven in live fire tests. It stops most Soviet tank shells. Sahelanthropus's armor because of its strength. He had nukes in mind. Exactly. It's meant to use its body as the fuel component for a nuclear weapon. Sahelanthropus uses built-in uranium enrichment Archaea to melt its own body and extract uranium-235 from the depleted uranium in its armor. Those Archaea perform the enrichment in an extremely short time. The concentration jumps by a factor of several hundred, from 0.2% to over 90%. The end result being highly enriched weapons-grade uranium. Sahelanthropus's body itself becomes a nuclear bomb. Emmerich says if it were to self-destruct, the nuclear yield would be somewhere in the region of 15 kilotons. Since you need about 50 kilograms of highly enriched uranium to trigger a nuclear reaction, that would mean Sahelanthropus contains something like 23 tons of depleted uranium. That's not very much. No, it isn't. That's about what you'd expect to find in a main battle tank's armor. The point is, it can be transported anywhere, even use its conventional weaponry on the battlefield, and the international community will never suspect a thing. I have spoken enough. Your men can take it from here. Will you permit me to rest? Have something to eat? I... Thought you don't eat. I can subsist without food. But there is more to the act of eating than nourishment. We receive nature's blessings. And we affirm our part in it. And in doing so, we express our gratitude. <laughs> Sorry, it's um hearing you say you don't need to eat and that you're a part of nature in the same breath. Anyway. Uh, what can we get you? Not exactly a five-star restaurant, but the kitchen's used to serving a lot of different appetites. Hamburgers. I... Uh, Hamburger work. You've completed your objective. Now get out of the hot zone. Americanized. I eat them often back home. <laughs> and you just can't let them go. Well, as far as symbols of the American Empire go, hamburgers are pretty good. Victory of capitalism. Hmm. Your people suffered so much at the hands of America. And you asked for hamburgers. We have suffered more than you can Boss, know. that's a serious injury. It won't heal any. Snake, are you okay? Snake! Enter the Eastern Communications Post and destroy the target equipment. Its location is on your iDroid. 
It seems. Yeah. Code Talker. What are the metallic archaea? Volcanic craters spewing sulfur. Water hot enough to boil your skin off. Ocean depths of 800 plus atmospheres. Wasteland radioactive enough to kill you where you stand. There are groups of organisms that survive this fight. No. Because of living in such environments. What about that? Extremo something. Extremo file. You made it. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility. I created a metallic offspring of pure archaea. They subsist on metals rather than organic matter. And some of them even consume uranium? Yes. Uranium enrichment archaea metabolize only uranium-235. As a result, they produce weapons-grade enriched uranium. Boss, what happened? Boss! Enter the Eastern Communications Post and destroy the target equipment. The location is on your iDroid.
completed your objective. Now get out of the hot zone. Snake, are you okay? Snake! Enter the Eastern Communications Post and destroy the target equipment. Its location is on your iDroid. You have arrived at your destination. You made it. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility. Finished development on that battle gear of his. Get back to Mother Base. <laughs> 